Mike, break down first. Give me our best picks, our best uh, teams for the draft this season. Who do you have as your highest ranked teams? As far as you, you were in, you were locked in all three days. What do you, what do you have for best grades and kind of break down for us why you, you gave those guys, those grades. For me, uh, my, my a plus draft went to the jets. Um, obviously they got the quarterback that they needed. They got themselves a tackle to protect, or they got him a guard and Elijah Vera Tucker Tucker to protect him, who is the best guard in the draft. And then they got a first round wide receiver for him as well uh, in Elijah Moore. So I think the fact that they literally got three players who are going to be day one starters uh, and contributors to that team. That's one of the best drafts that you can have. Um, I, I think that I also gave, let me look around here. Um, I also gave the Falcons an A draft because you got yourself, um, the best skill player available in Kyle Pitts and Richie Grant. A lot of people looked at as being the best safety in this class. So you got yourself a new starting safety as well. Getting two players who are going to plug in and be starters right off the bat is going to be go- going to be great for them overall. Um, I think the Cardinals had a pretty solid draft. Um, the Bills needed help on the edge. They got two top edge rushers in you know in the first and second round. They got Gregory Rosso who is I think six foot seven. Like he is a a giant of a man. He didn't have a great pro day. A lot of people were looking at him as a top 10 pick, but he kind of really didn't showcase the speed that he has. Um, You know, he was a little bit slower at pro day than they expected. He didn't, he sat out last year with COVID. Um, So it's one of those things where he, he hurt his stock a little bit, but still went in the first round Um, and the bills kind of just shoring up their defensive ends. Honestly, I kind of can't say enough about how good of a draft that just the entire AFC East had. Um, I mean, obviously I said the bills, the dolphins, I think had an a rated draft because I think I, I would have liked to have seen you guys get a running back as well, Me but I think too. Waddle Jalen Phillips, and then trading up to get Eichenberg, um, you know, at, on the offensive line, I, you know, this is a little bit of a, I guess a stereotype if you will, but tackles and offensive linemen from Notre Dame, man, they just end up being pretty successful in the NFL. Like it's kind of nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with these teams. There's certain colleges that just crank out certain caliber of players. It's a good thing for the college. It's a good thing for the NFL. Yeah. Like Notre Dame's got that. Iowa with tight ends. Like, you you have a lot of these. Yeah. You know, you have these schools that end up doing great work there. Um, but I think New England, obviously getting yourselves Mac Jones, curious to see what that puts as far as a leash on Cam Newton. Um, it's but a then short also, one. It's a fat and short one. They also um, can't throw. traded up. To, makes it, you know. Can't throw. <laughs> they, also, they also traded up to get Barmore at the beginning of the second round, who is one of the higher rated, uh, higher rated uh, defensive players that we had. And then they okay. also... Uh, got uh perkins out of oklahoma who is an edge rusher um who mel kuyper had a 36 on his big board they got him in the third round so he was would have been a late first early second round guy they got him round three um so you know real good value for them uh from that perspective uh kind of going down the list here um i think the browns had an excellent draft especially getting uh isn't this paramoa Aren't we in the, the the weird like alternate reality zone? They're like a good team. They're drafting better. It's it's they very. A, sh- they also had a superb free agency. I know. Like it's very weird Jadavian what's going on Clowney. in Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland they, is they a should be very strong in that division for at least this season and another one or two. But if I, and I want you to continue there and educate me more on the, the draft they just had. But hearing you say that compared with these other things they're doing, I like, are they going to, are they going to like finally turn the fucking corner here? I, th- I think so. Um, you know, looking at their draft, they got themselves a cornerback in the first round who is going to plug in and be, be a starter. And then they got in the second round, they got Owusu Kuromoa, who basically it was him, Micah Parsons, Micah Parsons, him. Like it was, which one's the best linebacker in the draft. And it was between the two of them, but he's looked at as being more of a scheme fit. So he fell pretty far in the draft and went a lot later than people expected. And the Browns just said, uh, thank you. Yeah. He can yeah, jump right me. into our team. Give me, give me, give me. So, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of look at it and you're just like, 
you know, did they fall into this? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but are they mad about it? No, they, they've had no. a great free agency, a great draft. Um, uh, the Jags obviously had a good draft. You got Trevor Lawrence, you got your franchise quarterback. You got to now just get the pieces to make sure he stays upright and can do his thing. Um, I, you know, I'm curious to see how that ends up going. And then uh, I also said that I think the Chargers had a good draft because they also got two players that I think are going to plug in and start right away in uh, Rashawn Slater and uh, uh, Asante Samuel Jr. So I don't know where you want me to go from there. I think uh, I want to I want to <laughs> flip. Sorry, I'm I'm doing research. Number one QB next year is Sam Howell out of North Carolina, and I'm not sure how I feel about that, but we'll we'll pin that for another episode. Give me some of your worst. Yeah. Uh, graded drafts and, and I, I really want to dig in on this I feel like Vegas had a very rough draft from everything I've read via social and I was looking at prior to that I feel like Dallas reached quite a bit after Micah Parsons um, but but run down for me some of the some of the worst uh, draft grades that you've given so I gave the Raiders a pretty low grade I gave them a D um, just because of the fact that Drafting Leatherwood in the first round was completely like no one saw that coming. Was he projected to be a second or third round guy? Late second round guy. Like you honestly, they got a guy who fell out of the first round in the second round. If they swapped those two picks and drafted Morig in the first round and then or Merig, I think is how you pronounce it, drafted Merig in the first round and then got Leatherwood in the second round, no one would be confused. Like no one would be mad. But then, like, later on, it just seemed like they kind of kept reaching on picks, which obviously, like, Bayok used to be a draft expert. And now they're, like, they put out a statement on Twitter basically saying that, you know, uh, what was it that they, they said? They're like, some draft experts think we reach, but we think that he's going to be a plug-and-play kind of guy. I'm like, literally someone retweeted it being like, weren't you the draft expert? Like, you were working for NFL Network doing all these mock drafts and making all these fucking picks. And, like... Now you're just saying, oh, these draft experts don't know what they're talking about. Dude, that was fucking you. Um, so uh, true. I, I thought that they reached a little bit. Um, my worst so, draft. Mike's though, got some feelings about May I? I, I dude, I, I also I, I ended up be out outsmarting Lance Zerline from uh from NFL Network. So that made yeah. me feel good. Suck at Lance. Um, you get he out had, of here, Lance, you're garbage. He, yeah, no, he had uh, Landon Dickerson going 94 in his rounds two and three mock draft after night one. And I was like, I don't see it, dude. He's an early round two guy for me. And he's like, he just responded saying medicals. And I was like, I guess that's why I'm on the couch. And then when Landon Dickerson got drafted at like, what, 40? I was like, couch guy gets a win. Like <laughs> That's right. For real. Good about it. Um, but Dra yeah, his draft battles. expert credentials of yours are starting to tick up, son. <laughs> Clearly on the rise. Um, but no, my worst draft though has to be the Texans. Um, and a lot of <laughs> that has I to love, go. What I a love. surprise! What a surprise! <laughs> that's a no. that's a going for it dumpster fire. We had <laughs> we talked about that ago. They're just continuing the burn. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is I know you have the controversy right now and the investigations going on around Deshaun Watson, and obviously that's probably making him a hard sell. You probably could not trade him because of that. But man. You really still should have fucking tried because your first pick was in the third round. And now you just drafted a quarterback out of Stanford in uh, what is it? Davis Mills, who's going to be your backup to Deshaun Watson. And if he just gets thrown to the fire, whether it be due to a trade or a suspension, y'all are just fucked. Like, I don't know how oh, else to say it. They're, they're in bad shape either way. No, you're not wrong. They've had a lot of questionable uh, management. This is basically just B Bill O'Brien's parting shot. Is have right? fun. It's the taking it's the three picks and they don't it's, start. You know what it is? It's the piece of shit that stays on the bowl. It stays there. It sometimes brings the vapors up. That's Bill O'Brien's legacy with Houston. He left such a stink pile behind him. Where's he at now? He's in Notre Dame now, right? Isn't he? No, he's in Alabama. 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 Yeah, but no, I, I, they actually did have more than three picks. I was confusing them with the Seahawks. The Seahawks only had three picks, which is part of the reason that they had a poor draft grade, just because there's not much to grade. Um, but yeah, no, the Texans, it's 
Bill O'Brien just leaving his mark on the franchise and potentially damaging them for future years to come. Uh, their front office currently isn't doing them any favors either, but nope. um, yeah, I, I also think that there's a lot of reaches from the saints. Um, I, Ian book. I don't know if he's actually going to amount to put much. Me, put me down for the saints are, are, are going to start circling the toilet bowl. All that's left for yeah. me is Kam- Kamara. I don't even think Mike Thomas is as good as Mike Thomas thinks Mike Thomas is. So K- Kamara is there a hot for take. me and the, a hot the rest take. is, I don't, I don't think he is. Yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, I think that the Packers saved their draft a little bit at the end. Um, Myers and Amari Rogers in later rounds, I think, were great picks. But Stokes was a big reach at twenty nine for me. Um, he was really a, 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 a mid to late third round guy with a at- lot of wide receiver talent on the board, which is yeah. is a show of good faith for Aaron. And they were like, Yeah, I don't want. To- they have no respect for Aaron Roger. That's why he's leaving. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I'm i sure you probably have the tweet brought up in regards to Dallas uh, from Matt Miller in regards to who they brought. So you can go ahead and bring that up. I'm going to bring that up right now. Let me – it was phenomenal. Uh, Mike and I are both big fans of Matt Miller. Um, let me – oh, he tweeted so much today. He tweeted so much. Cowboys round three versus my board pick 73 Osa Odigizua ranked 228. They took him with the 73rd pick Chauncey Golston was taken with the 56th pick Matt Miller ranked him 242 and on pick 99 for Dallas uh, nation Wright was ranked 315 and he does, he does give them a saving grace where he said could be they're right. And I'm wrong but I've never had this happen before. <laughs> so not uh, why, why Mike, why explain this to me? I mean, I, I couldn't answer it for you. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm very much a novice at this and I'm amateur at best when it comes to doing evaluations on players and scouting and stuff like that. I've just been having a lot of fun with it this, this summer and, or this spring, I should say, sorry, it's already hot in Florida. Um, and with the speculation, 91, and whatnot 91 dig doing, right. Yeah. So with the speculation and whatnot, it, it's just one of those things like nation writes a guy that a lot of people didn't even think was going to get drafted. If he had him ranked at three fifteen, there's only 259 picks, you know, so you could see someone deciding to take a flyer on him in round six or seven, but you're not expecting anybody. If no one drafted him, you wouldn't have been shocked, you know? So it's one of those things. Did you guys spend a third round pick getting someone who, realistically you could have gotten in you know a a third round pick spending on someone that you could have gotten as an undrafted free agent you know that's it it seems like it could be very wasteful as far as capital goes craig what do you think about that uh i mean i know you're not as well versed in the draft but but matt miller fairly respected guy in his in his profession sure uh and these reaches does this make you feel better about what the dolphins did? I mean, it, it, it helps. It helps <laughs> again. You Mike's grade alone helped when I saw that he gave it the dolphins. I think he gave him an a um, I'm again, these were not names that I, and maybe it said I'm out of the game in that, in the college side of it, which is maybe that what I got to fix and do better on the college side, get in. I, I like my pros. I know the pros. I buy all their cards each year and all that, but I'm feeling a little calmer overall about the, about the Dolphins specifically. It's where I know the most about it, but primarily because Cuba said good things and Spillane saying good things. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, Do you have anything you'd like to tag on to Mike's draft corner? Um, But I will go ahead and just toss, (laughs) toss a sleeper pick out there that I really like. Uh, This is again, a little bit of me being a, a Homer from uh from UCF but I think Jacob Harris wide receiver out of UCF going to the Rams is going to be a very interesting prospect mostly because of the fact that he's six foot five and ran a four three nine at his pro day he's got a 40 and a half inch vertical leap which is one of the biggest ones that was recorded at pro days and he had an over 11 foot broad jump so the dude is a fucking athlete he's gonna be the truth is he a partial gazelle Basically. Yeah. Okay. He was never like the number one guy for UCF because we obviously, we, we have, we've had a lot of 
great receivers. Gabriel Davis, who's done well with the Bills. He always kind of outshined him a little bit. Trey Nixon, who also got drafted this year, went to the Patriots in the seventh round. Um, I think he's going to be a very interesting prospect. In college, averaged about 18 yards a catch. Um, so, you know, going to be a little bit more of a deep threat. Um, can beat beat a corner, can get up there and come down with the ball. If his hands have improved, I think he could either be just that giant wide receiver on the outside used in red zone situations, or they might try and transition him to being like a tight end for his size because a six foot five guy running four, three, eight matching up against linebackers and safeties is going to be scary to try and defend if he can put it together. So I think give uh, Jacob Harris maybe two years I want to see where he's at. I think he could end up being something very special for the Rams. So that's my that's my sleeper, uh, favorite sleeper pick out of the draft. If he has any rookie cards, I'm on it because I need them UCF boys <laughs> anyway. <laughs>